Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Tito and this is not a movie review. This is the watch party video that I talked about in my chemistry movie review. If you guys have seen that review, you remember that I said that on the, on the 19th of April, Adenike Adebayo, the director of chemistry, gathered a few of us to watch chemistry. Back then, we thought it was going to come out that day on Netflix, but it didn't come out that day. Anyway, we gathered for the watch party. We watched the movie. And after the movie, there are several conversations that happened tied to the movie and, you know, the theme of the movie, i.e., you know, wedding night and, you know, sex with your partner, all types of salacious and scandalous things. So that's what I'm going to be, talk what I'm going to be talking about in this video. And I think we will begin with Adenike's acceptance, not her acceptance speech, but she did come out to say a few things after the movie was done that day. So I think that's where we'll start. And for the other more spicy things that were said, I may not show you guys those things. I may just have to tell you what um, was discussed so as to conceal the identities of people that said a few spicy things that day. Here goes. Ordinarily, we are supposed to be watching it on Netflix, but that's why I decided to add. Stop recording. Stop recording. Whilst we are, whilst we are waiting for them to come to our it's age, mm -hmm. we will. Who is that? 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 So this was before the movie. Before we watched the movie. As Even as Netflix is now. <laughs> so in this, here you have um, that's Didi in glasses. Um, she's one of the writers of the movie. Then you have Michael Edger who was in the film, and Faith Me also, who um, co-produced. Actually, when it comes to Netflix, even if you don't want to watch it, please do. What you say? Please don't. 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 Experiences? Yeah, personal experience and you friend of people experience. I was just put together to tell a very good very hopefully what translates into being a very good story. Uh one of the writers is here. Watching this back now and knowing how things ended up, it's um, interesting. I mean, I didn't guess that she was nervous then, you know. Oh, if only she knew <laughs> what, what lay ahead. Because <laughs> when the movie didn't come out on Netflix that night, um, it was, I mean, people were, she was inundated with messages and calls and she didn't even know what the situation was. Even from days after, she still didn't know why the movie never came out on Netflix. Maybe now she does. I haven't talked to her about it, but um, it was a trying period, you know, and um, it's just, I'm looking at this clip now thinking, boy, if she thought that she was feeling nervous then or anxious then, she had no idea what the days following this day had in store for her. Now let's move on to what should be her like speech after we saw the movie. Now this is, from what I'm seeing here, is a four minutes and 46 second video. Let's go. Okay, okay. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I was very stressed for watching it. Why? 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 Why?
Based and, on yes, it was it, it wasn't inspired. I mentioned it before uh, a few people came back, and I've said it to my YouTube channel as well that it did happen to touch my eye that I got my period the night that we got married. So it did, I think it took us like what, almost two weeks before, and we had also waited until marriage. Oh it took us about two weeks before we could start that. And then eventually, when we started trying, it was kind of just, so just a whole lot of drama surrounding it before we got to. Quote, quote, an enjoyable experience. Yeah, you know, like, you know, so yeah, that I, I shared, I shared that experience with you. Too. A lot of people have shared their similar experiences as well. So I thought it was a good story to um, tell. And yeah, it was interesting getting reactions at certain points. I thought were going to be. What do, you, what do you want people to take out from the film? People that will see it on Netflix, what message do you want to pass across? A lot. A lot. Communication in marriage is very important. Sex is very important in marriage. How communication and sex go hand in hand, you know, in marriage as well. Um, that also influenced my approach to directing the film as well in terms of what they have to say. You know, I mean, you'd notice, I, saw, I think when we mentioned it, and I'm glad she caught it, the very first time we tried to ask it, the guy just kind of like, you know, it just, why would she cry? Why would she take back off? You know, because, I mean, you know, it, there's a process to it. So I'm glad she got it. And that was something, compared to the, the yeah, last time when it eventually yeah. happened, you know, there, were, there had been a lot of romance. They had talked about different issues. They were both in their heads about different things. You know, but then we were at a comfortable place. So it's easier for, it was, it was easier for her to be relaxed and get to that place where, you know, it would be a much more enjoyable um, experience. Process. Yeah, experience for her. So, you know, I mean, it's really just dialogue. A lot of people, and I think I shared with either Balaji or Michael several posts I've seen on Instagram from a lot of people talking about their first night, you know, of their honeymoon or whatever. There's this perception that, you know, you get married and then it's just like, it just hits the ground running. But it's not, sometimes it works like that for certain people, but there are just so many things that can happen that could prevent that from happening. That's what the. So, what do you hope people get from this? I hope it. I mean, it creates um, a safe space to talk about sex, especially in marriage, to understand how important it is to talk. You know, I feel like, especially for women, sex is very mental. You know, and I think I mentioned it when we were shooting. I mentioned it to Daniel as well. It's easy for men to just up and go, but there's a lot of mental work you know that goes on especially as women you know start to grow and they're building their families and they're having kids there's a lot of emotional trauma going on in the head and you know it's something my husband and i talk about often as well that I've, i know you've gone to work and you're tired but in addition to me i've been going to work as well i've had to back the mean that our son feed him chase after him do this that. i'm tired you know, so so if you if if you want me to be at that place constantly, then you also have to, in addition to me also doing the work, but you also have to help me be at that place. So it can't be a situation where you're you're just saying, oh, I'm the man of the house, and I just work and that's it. You know, but if you make an effort and you ask to see, oh, this is the partnership and there's togetherness, and as I'm doing the laundry, you're ironing, as I'm laying the bed, you're cooking, you know, there's so much, so it, the burden doesn't fall on one person. It's easy for, it's, it's, it's not, it's not until you start touching someone that you start romancing the person. Right? Mm -hmm. you know, there are so many things that you Word, 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 just was seductive to women. Am I? Am I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 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 um, particularly for women, I mean, women understand themselves, but men, especially when it comes to the bedroom, I don't, men, I don't know if we're just stubborn or reluctant or we're just hard-headed, we don't, we fail to realize that a lot of the prep for women when it comes to sex and intimacy is 
it, it's, it happens way before you get into the bedroom. It's, you know, the conversation throughout the day. It's the helping out. It's, the, it's certain little things. And it's also conversation, also asking, you know, how, how, what frame of mind she's in and different, different things. Communication is so huge. And I, like I said, I said it in the um, review and I'm, I'm glad that Adenike said it, you know, that day as well. I even forgot that she mentioned that. And I think all these things, now that on the other end of this movie, it's come out and there have been conversations about it. I think what Adenike wanted from this film was achieved. Lots of people have talked about, you know, the dialogue between the couple in the movie and how they just kept on talking a lot. And that confused a few people who saw the movie. They're like, ah, just do this thing. It's not, it's not rocket science. Just go on and do it. But they failed to realize that, you know, Joba was a virgin and it was her wedding night. There's just lots of pressure. And even normally, you know, conversations need to be had. People need to feel comfortable with each other. A couple needs to feel comfortable with each other. They need to be like, somewhat on the same frequency in the same headspace for them to have a pleasurable and enjoyable experience for both of them so yes i think lots of people came out with that one way or the other after seeing the movie chemistry yeah i think we've heard enough from nikki and I, if i remember correctly those are the only two times where she like led the conversation the rest of what i'm going to watch will be the conversations that happened amongst us her guests um about the things that happened in the movie. A third party is a party that has agents. Do you understand? A third party is a intelligent party. No, 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 not necessarily. No, it is an artificial intelligence. Third party. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, for instance, wait. Okay, this was the example you gave, right? For instance, you. So, so it, so it between husband and wife, they're using, they're using, they're using, they're using. Good. Now, husband has struggled one month. Can she use it without the husband? Okay, Can she now become? Yeah, yeah, she must have choice. The third party, though, because he can't, he can't take the place of this other person. Okay, what is happening? Can't be doing this without this other. Okay, so that conversation was about toys and them being introduced in the marital bed, right? I didn't care was. Of the opinion that you know sex toys should not be introduced because they can become an idol and they are a third party like she said uh, in the bedroom and it can take the place of one's partner that was her standpoint i think some other people in the room had a different standpoint in terms of using a toy mm -hmm, using it to aid the experience you know so you know how they say you know it's your it's your ally it's not your enemy so in that case where they use it to enhance the experience, is it okay? You know, is it permissible? So it's just really a conversation of is it permissible or is it not permissible? You know, generally for the couple, um, in terms of them being solely dependent on each other, I think it was more so that than, you know, from a Christian or a religious standpoint on whether or not toys should be introduced to the bedroom. But that was another very spirited conversation. Let's uh, move on to just maybe one more Thing that we discussed that was well you know like even if so there are some women that like especially we african women we're not raised to <laughs> embrace our sexuality yep. you know we learn that ourselves mm -hmm. you know it took me a while and i talk about it on my youtube as well that it took me a Shout while out, to become very comfortable with myself mm -hmm. to be able to look at myself and be comfortable with my own sexuality there's so many women are not like that so if you have a woman that requires more work why not help teach her that's yeah. that's what i'm saying yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. you don't just give up on someone like oh just because they didn't satisfy me today it means oh they can never satisfy me like you also like you said uh if there's a lot of work and just no being selfless and not self teaching self someone you know back and forth and all of that okay so i think that point was <clears throat> this mindset that lots of people have that if you know when a couple gets married but the sex isn't banging you know if it's not good the first time or the first couple of times lots of people would want to just throw their hands in the air and, and give up and say oh my goodness you know this is why we should have had sex before married before we got married so that we'll know whether or not the sex would be good and i think what i didn't care was saying in that in this particular clip was that um sometimes it takes people to explore their sexuality within the confines of marriage to know how their body works and to know what they're comfortable with and then in the process of doing that you know, over time, then the sex between the couple 
the married couple can actually be much better. So if, even if it may start bad during the honeymoon or whatever, don't give up on your partner. Keep trying, keep learning each other. You as an individual learn yourself and whatnot or what makes you, what works for you, what essentially what works for you. And, and you know, don't just discard your partner and all that. And that's a, it's a thing. And I may even do, because I do have a podcast, I may even do an episode on that. I find that that's, lots of women tend to say that even if they may be celibates, even if they may be virgins or whatever, I've heard women say that they don't want their man to be a virgin or to be celibate. They want him to come with experience because they don't want a situation where two of them are novices in the bedroom. And I, I think to myself when I hear that, what if both of you are inexperienced? And what if when, you know, during your honeymoon the first time or the first few times you do it, the sex is whack? and it's not really hitting, does that, will you check out? Does that mean that that's the end of it? Because, I mean, there's, name for me one thing in life that the first time you did it, you were great at it. But for some reason, lots of people, and I do think women, a number of women fall in this category, believe that the first time that they have sex with their husband, that it should be awesome. It's not always like that. And if, if it's not like that, have the patience and the maturity to work things out and to learn, you know, to learn each other and to get to where you need to get to. You know, I think it's quite immature for, for women to believe, oh, if the sex is whack when we get married, and especially if we waited until we got, got married to have sex and the sex is now whack, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to lose my mind. I think that's a bit immature. It's not a progressive mindset. Um, but I want to say it's really important, here, especially now that Tucker is here, who I call um, <laughs> festival filmmaker, festival actor. Oh my God. <laughs> that that <laughs> is a place really for small films in the grand scheme of things. And while we get carried away with scale and, um, you know, the razzmatazz. Oh, I wonder why I cut that, that bit. I think what Daniel was saying there was how there's a place for films like chemistry, um, films that don't tell orthodox stories. Because you will agree that, you know, the story of chemistry is not one we tend to see, particularly in mainstream movies. The topic is a bit uh, niche, but very relevant nonetheless. And I think the point that Daniel was making was that there is a place for these types of stories and these types of films, be it the big screen, be it um, the small screen or streaming, those stories need to be told. And I think he really, um, he appreciated the heart and the soul of chemistry. I do believe, if I remember correctly, I believe that's what he was saying. So yeah, guys, um, those are some of the things we discussed at the watch party and some of the uh, clips, at least the ones that I can show you guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it as well, going down memory lane. Um, yeah, chemistry is showing on YouTube, on Bolaji Ogumola TV. If you haven't seen it, go and see it. I'm currently running a... To be honest, the giveaway of the competition should have ended on Sunday night. But hey, send in your entry. Let's see if it will, it will fly. So the competition is if you can guess the exact date that chemistry will hit 1 million views on YouTube, then you stand to win some, um, some money. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was different. <laughs> it was fun. I hope in the edit it makes sense. But I hope you guys also enjoyed it. Please like this video by clicking on the like button and subscribe to this channel as well. By clicking on the black subscribe button, watch my chemistry review. If you haven't watched it already, go and watch the movie Chemistry. And I'd be surprised if you're watching this video, but you haven't seen the movie Chemistry. That's um, a bit strange. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>